Hi guys and thanks for joining me today. We are going to paint this field of flowers and all the colors are in the description below. Also the link to my new Patreon account. So please check it out and don't forget to like and subscribe and let's go paint. So to begin, we're going to just do a wash of blue for the sky with the French ultramarine and cerulean and just a tiny touch of rose in there and plenty of water. Just keep this at about a number two on the value scale. And we'll bring it right down to the land and we'll go over that mountain area. And now I'm gonna make a soft dulled down yellow for the background. So I'm gonna add purple, mix some rose and French ultramarine to make purple and Put that into my yellow and that will dull that color down and keep it light and transparent this is a far away color and i'm just going about to the top third of the page and from there i'm going to start breaking up into little holes of white paper and that is going to be the flower area coming in so not making them like little polka dots evenly spaced. I'm still having some variation in there. And then as I do each row coming closer, I'm going to add more and more yellow until it's just solid yellow. And I will also have my shapes increase in size and there will be also larger yellow shapes in between the white spaces. So that's creating an illusion of depth in there. So now I'm mixing up a far away green color and I have the cerulean blue and then if you add some yellow and a touch of rose that will dull it down and make it look like a far away color. And I'm just adding a transparent layer over here and this is going to be the hills and the mountain area. So I'll use that same green and I'm going to sprinkle in these light dots and I'm going around the white shapes now and trying to keep the color nice and soft so it's a background color. And so I am also not completely painting over the yellow either. I'm leaving little bits of yellow poking through. So Joe Francis Dowden was the artist who I got this painting from and he, his technique uses tons and tons of masking fluid and I prefer to go without. 
uh, and just paint around the shapes because then I feel it looks more natural and has more organic kind of a feel to it. And I think you can see while I'm pulling in my cerulean here, I'm kind of just doing scribble painting. So I'm using the tip of the brush and just kind of scribbling around, leaving little bits of yellow peeking through and avoiding the whites. Also, I'm adding some more water in some areas so it's a little bit washier and then letting it be more opaque in other areas and that's what the cerulean is good for because it's a bit on the opaque side. And now as I'm getting getting closer to the foreground area, I'm kind of making stem looking shapes with the greens. And this is negative painting. So this is how we make that illusion of detail in there. And so now I've got some French ultramarine with a tiny bit of rose to purple it a little bit more. And this is the mountains I'm pulling in back here. And you can use this opportunity to fix your horizon and make those mountains a little nicer shape. And now here, I'm just kind of putting in some little hillsides. We've got different level plains. And 
And here I kind of made some weird triangle shapes, so I'm going to put some trees over those to kind of hide that mistake there. But we're adding on these little layers here, and all of this keeps adding to the sense that we've got a large, vast space. And each layer goes on top and becomes a little bit darker. And that is one of the beauties of using this transparent paint when you go one on top of the other. And uh, now I'll put one sort of middle ground row of trees and I'm going to use the gold this time. And just kind of sprinkle some gold across here. And then I'll go back in with the French Ultramarine. And as I use that I'm going to kind of pull down some trunks for these trees here too. So. Gives a nice bit of layering, extra depth into that background. So now we can start the flowers, and I have my warm cadmium red, and I just dashed in some yellow and rose just to mix it up a little bit. And I'm using a watered down mix to sprinkle in these flowers over in the back, and I'm trying to keep plenty of little white specks of paper coming through. You need those highlights. So don't paint over all of the white shapes. Keep some of it. Little cracks here and there. And don't get too heavy with your red yet. This is the first layer of red. We're going to go and do one more after this just to get uh, some red shadows onto the petals.
uh, before I start putting the shadows onto the flowers, I'm going to start with the darks in the field. And this is that extra bit of detail. So right in about the middle of the painting, the darks start coming in and they're just in little clumps. And you keep little spaces in between for where the stems are. So this is some more negative painting that we're doing here. And then I'll have some areas where I let the dark be a little more watered down so it just kind of shadows it. And then some areas that are quite dark. And this is just my straight Payne's Gray I'm using here. Okay, now we can add some details onto the flowers and this will make it look like there's layers of petals here in depth inside the flowers. And then your last thing is just to put in the final little dark centers and that was with Payne's Gray again and then that's it for this one. <laughs>